Welcome to Real Herbalism Radio. Today's episode is a re-airing of a classic show, and until today, it was available only to the Herbal Nerd Society. So while myself, Sue, and Candace use this time to harvest herbs and the fruits of summer, just kick back and relax and enjoy this classic. Backyard chickens are taking over the world one yard at a time. How do you know if keeping chickens is right for you? What do urban chickens offer beyond eggs? When should you get started? Today we'll be talking about getting started with your own little flock. Now here are your hosts, Candace Hunter and Sue Sierra Lupe. I'm Candace Hunter. And I'm Sue Sierra Lupe. And, and welcome, welcome to, to Real Herbalism Radio. Bark, bark, bark. Bark, 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 bark. Today's the chicken show. It is. It is. Congratulations. The... Thank you. I am a new flock tender. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, well, you always have great flock. words for that. I was going to say, you know, mom or whatever, but you're like tender. I'm a flock tender. tender. <laughs> oh, I don't own the flock. The flock owns me. It's kind of weird. We're not, tender nobody the owns. There's no owning. They are here living in my space under my protection. Oh, okay. See? There we yes. go. All right. Tending. Part of my own little herbin farm. Shepherding. <laughs> Shepherding. Yeah. Urban, urban, my urban little farm. Urban, urban farm. That's why I decided I'm calling it instead of the urban farm project. It is the urban farm project. So you've had your chickens now for how many days? Yeah, just a couple, just a couple. Yeah. Actually, by the time we air this, it's going to be a, like a full week. Ooh. Ooh, that's when the professionalism. That's when you get to answer all the questions. I'll just know everything. Then. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So how do you like it so far? I love it. I love it. I feel like I got really blessed. We were planning as part of the Herban Project, mm-hmm. the Herban Farm Project. I was planning to get chickens and ducks, and I've got all these raised beds and planting some trees, and I started doing the math, and the chickens need a coop, and coops right. you know, have to be built out of materials that mm-hmm. cost money. It's true. And there's time. Or you can buy a coop, which costs even more money. How much do they cost? Have you uh, shopped around at all? Oh, Yeah. They are like buying anything else. You can get the stripped down version for you know two to three hundred dollars, or you can get the Taj Mahal with a pool and, and library for uh-huh. nine hundred. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, they're all over the board. I, I hear they're that they're picky readers. They're very. What's that? I hear that chickens oh, are picky readers. Very picky yes, readers, yes, yes. You got to get the right subscriptions and everything. That's right. Yeah, no, it's they're so. it's it's they're all over the board, and they all have you know features that you you might need or you might not need. And not being a chicken owner, I'm like, well, do I need to have all that? Right. I don't know. Right. I mean, we had it, ducks. Yes, you know, and, you and I have a friend who's a real down to a real getting your hands dirty farmer that he looks at those and scoffs. Yes. Yeah. Oh, even geez, you don't even need the $200 that. one, he's scoffing at it. Right. He's like, oh, you just kind of get this and wires and there you go. But, you know, he's, he's willing to <laughs> right. have kind of a makeshift duct tape garden. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. and if you're uh, living in the city and you have a nice place, but you want to have chickens mm-hmm. or, you know, and you, you, that's an, it's a nice addition to the yard. Right. Yeah. You know, it'd be the same thing if, like if your kids say, you know, just get them a couple of tires and, uh, you know, a couple pieces of wood. They can make their own playground. That's right. Or, you know, you go out and you buy the really expensive the swing play school stuff. thingy yeah. stuff from, you know, and you spend $800 on a, on yeah. a play thing. So right. it's kind of the same deal, I guess. Those are those are the kids with the new play pen, or 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 the ones with that have to scrounge around and play with glass. And as long as they got their tetanus <laughs> shot, it's fine. Yeah, good. Good. It's fine. Right. Yeah. But there was an old joke that I used to listen to. It's like you know they had they, little kids used to play in a parking lot and they never got hurt. And they moved it. They moved the monkey bars in. They lost 120 kids in one day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, oh yeah, it worked. It's like oh. Yeah. 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 Clunk, clunk. Yeah. So yeah, we were. I, I started doing it, and I decided that this may not be the year for chickens. I was going to have to wait and build my flock next year because I need to put my raised beds in and mm-hmm. the trees, and you know, ah. And then I was blessed. Yes, yes. You got a nice coop too, heavy I too, really nice, beautiful coop. Yeah, and sturdy. I'm sure folks who've been following me on Instagram and Facebook will have seen it by now. I'll probably put pictures. And the practical herbalist too. Yeah, yeah. The, it's the beautiful little nesting boxes, mm-hmm. the yellow sides, and the yeah. by levels. And so cheerful. They go through this fence. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. We had a plan for putting it in. We have two parts to our backyard: the the part that's near the house on this side of the privacy fence, and then the part on the other side, which I'm calling the farm, where the raised beds will go. Mm-hmm. But it's all like gravel. It had right. originally been an RV pad, a yeah. graveled in large RV pad. Like you could fit two RVs back there. It's yeah. huge for urban. Anyway, 
I was planning to put all the chicken coop in the run on this side of the fence. And then we got, we were gifted with the ability to adopt these chickens and their coop and all everything from mm-hmm. a family who's downsizing. And I realized the, the configuration of the doors on the chicken coop meant that it really was not going to fit at all where I had originally planned, not even close. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're, we're, you know, trying to get the coop out of the yard and move all the stuff. And both of my, I think Patrick and I were both like, okay, gears turning. How are we going to do this? How are we going to make this work? Mm-hmm. How are we going to do it? And then I realized, oh, if we put the coop on one side of the fence and the run on the other side of the fence, it'll be brilliant. And sure. then we just have to cut a hole through two of the bottom panels on the fence it's a wooden fence. It's a wooden fence. Yeah. So I could do that. That's very so, cool. Yeah. Well, the nice thing about what you have is on one side of your fence, you have a lot of gravel. So that's mm-hmm. going to be, that's where it's hotter. Yeah. So I would imagine they're spending more time as it, right? As of this recording, it's snowy. It's cold. It's winter and yeah. snowy. Yeah. So you're spending more time on the warmer side of the fence. And then in the summer, because they are temperature sensitive, yeah. they'll probably be on the other side of the fence where more of the grass is and the, yeah. the greenery where it's, it, I'm sure it's a very It'd big difference in temperature. Yes. So that's a nice and division for, and you have a mixed flock and not all mixed. chicken breeds are good for cold and some are some are better for heat, so right. it really depends. And you you got a you got a couple of different ones. Yeah, be so it's good to have a variety yeah. of them. Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited about that. Yeah, and that's something that a lot of people don't think about. They'll just like, oh, look at this beautiful little chick. It'll be just fine. And they live in a hot place, and they've mm-hmm. picked up this big meaty bird that doesn't do very well in the heat. Right. Yeah. How do you how do you determine which breeds? I mean, are there books that have do you just go look at a poultry breed and it'll tell you in the book? Yeah, so they. I mean, you're usually it's kind of weird. You're, you're buying them generally by breed. Right. There are there are more mixed uh, breeds out there that you can get, and it's just a, it's a mutt chicken. Yeah, but most commonly you're getting it from. Uh, uh, feed, a feed store, store from and they a specify. Breeder. They usually yeah. specify what the breeds are. Yeah, I mean, like with dogs, you can make assumptions that are pretty safe. You know, if it's a husky or a dog with a really thick, heavy coat, or a double coat, or a coat that sheds, they're more for cold weather. Mm-hmm. And if they're one of a thinner, thinner coat, like a boxer who's got really, you know, really thin hair or right. fine skin, greyhounds, those those dogs do much better in warm weather. Yeah. So dogs, pretty obvious. Chickens, I don't know. They all look the same. <laughs> They all look fluffy, little fluffy, beaks and sweet, and, around and you know, yeah, sharp, sharp beaks. <laughs> yeah. But that's when doing your homework ahead of time really makes a big difference. So, what I got originally got Orpingtons because they're very cold hardy, mm. and they're also docile, so nice. they're they're yeah. family friendly, which. That's another consideration. Yes. Yes. So we had, uh, when we had them, we had little kids and a variety of other people's kids. I can train my kids how to, how to treat with the kids, but I'll, or the chickens, chickens but all it takes is a second. And then you've got a dead chicken on your hand because of some stupid kid. Or you've got a kid who's now got a giant, yeah, giant hole in his hand because he was stupid enough to. Yeah. And we only have the girls. We don't have, have roosters. Roosters are. I know there are exceptions, but for the most part, they are mean, and it's their job to be mean. Right? Yeah, they are the protectors. Protect, yeah, it's their job is to protect their hens. Yeah, and some people are fine about kicking them in the chest and getting them away when they're attacking you, but other people are like, "Whoa, right. it's not my bag." So, you know, if you're just you've just got girls, it's a little bit easier. Yeah, my little flock is just girls, and we have two or. Orplingtons and mm-hmm. two Americanas. Mm-hmm. And the Americanas are smaller of stature. Yes. They're both, all four of them are full grown. They're about two years old, two and a half years old. Right. And the Americanas are the ones that have the different colored eggs. Yeah. Yeah. They're, and then the Orpingtons just have brown, brown eggs. Brown. The other thing people always ask, well, should I get white eggs or brown eggs? Nutritionally, is it different? No. No. <laughs> it's it not different. The color of the shell is kind of not relevant. But in a grocery store sense, they're training people to think that the brown egg is a better egg now. Right. And right. they can charge more for it. Yeah. Right. right. No, I'm not saying that in the grocery store setting that the white egg is better or the brown egg. I'm not, I'm not going there. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying that we're, they're conditioning most of us to think yeah. brown egg better, different. Mm-hmm. You know, but when you see chicken eggs, they're green. They're, they're brown. Mm-hmm. I've seen white. They're white. Yeah. There are many you, shades you, you, of white. There are white. many shades. Yeah. And, and so you don't yeah. – and like you said, so I, don't, I don't think there's – is there much really nutritional difference between – 
the no. egg? It, you used to actually. It used to be when they started putting brown eggs in, it was smaller farms. Yeah. Right. So there was a bit of a nutrition nutritional difference. Sure. So right. these were fringe farmers, and the chickens got out. So yes, because the chicken had a better diet and yeah. they were able to exercise, right. then you did have more nutrition in a brown egg. But now yeah. everything's factory farmed, no matter what. So an egg is an egg is an egg. Right. If it's coming from your backyard, then it's going to be as nutritional as you allow your chickens yes, to have. Absolutely. And if you like to have a few more antioxidants or lutens or different thing, things like that in your eggs, then give them a better diversity of a diet. You know, give right. them calendula for nice, bright yolks. Right. You know, give and them comfrey. I know comfrey. that's what you, you've said in the past. Yeah, very high important. in minerals. Uh, that's a common chicken feed. Yeah. Very common. And you will be happy about it because once you get comfort in your you're never going to get rid of it. <laughs> so is, there, is there a good resource to research what breed is good for you in your yard? Yeah. There's – if you – you've got to figure out – like you guys have been what in this house questions? for a while. So yeah. you pretty much know what you want. I think that one thing people forget is, well, I want my chickens to be free range. And they have a patio. And the patio is the perfect place to poop. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. my goodness. That's... Yeah, we had that problem with ducks. Yes. Ducks like to congregate up as close to the doors where people enter and mm -hmm. leave and That's poo the there. They want to be where you they are. They poo there as yeah. much as possible. They are social. Yeah, so, they are social. They yeah. really are. And That's I'm, what they do. Sounds like chickens are the same. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, we for us, we have a patio in back. We have the farm area that I already spoke of. And then the area where the actual chicken run is we're just calling that whole yard the chicken run mm -hmm. so it's the area between the privacy fence and the house it's completely fenced in it's completely private and so i'm planning to eventually let my chickens just have free run range back there yeah. but i'm also planning to control it it's not necessarily going to be all the time every day right you don't want to jump them jumping on your pizza oven and pooping on that. Right. And know. I also don't want them thinking that this yard has become boring, so we're going to explore the rest of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Really don't want that. Right. I do eventually plan to bring them. Our front yard also is, is a completely fenced-in area. So I eventually plan to make excursions at certain times of year, like in the spring, mm -hmm. when it's you know a good time to scratch the beds up and that sort of thing. Right. Or maybe midsummer when it's plants are established. I don't know. Yeah. I'll find out. But I plan to get bring them up into the front yard for bouts of time. Well, but, for your situation, it might be better to just to get a chicken tractor. Yeah. Because you've got a, already got the coop. You've got yeah. kind of a place where they can go up a bunch of different levels, which they love yes. that and it's contained. Yes. And then you've got mul multiple places for yards. So a chicken tractor or a mobile coop, as it, as it were, we, right. we had those for a long time too. And then we yeah. changed the way we did our yard. So we didn't really need the chicken tractor anymore and gave it to some friends. Right. So like in the morning, you'd load up the chickens into the chicken tractor and then you would wheel it out to the front yard yep. and say, go, go for it. There you and go. Eat. And they'll go just and they'll just run around in a little tractor. You know, mm -hmm. you've only got the four. So what does a chicken tractor look like for our, those okay. of our audience who are not familiar with this, what mm -hmm. sounds like a somewhat insane term? Yes, it's mm -hmm. uh, basically a, a rectangular coop. And then you have wheels on one end of it. It's like a wheelbarrow. There's wheels at the top. And then you, uh, some people have, uh, net, um, not netting, sorry. They have chicken wire at the bottom of it. So okay, when you so lift the cage, because you have uh, kind of like wheelbarrow staves at one end. And, yeah. you, and you lift the cage, kind of tip it. And then the, you can still have the chickens in there right. and you move it around. That would be nice. And it also yeah. saves your grass Yeah, because they can't dig as much. I mean, they'll dig and scratch. But they but, won't destroy yeah. the grass. That's a good, that's a good tip. So that, that's something for people that like to have a little more grass. Like I don't yeah. – if it were up to me, I would have zero grass. Yeah, we're moving toward the zero or close to zero grass mm -hmm. stage, but it's going to take us years to get yeah. there. And I'd prefer not to have a mud hole in the interim. Right. Well, and that's, that's the thing is it does cover the mud because people yeah. do like walking around. Yeah. But uh, I also don't like, you know, relaying paving stones all the time, which you yeah. sometimes end up doing unless you're putting concrete, which is just so hot. Why would you relay yeah. paving stones? Um, in, in the place that I live, uh, there's uh, – it's all like old riverbed, so it's mud. Okay. So you can you can level out your yard, but because of the type of soil it is, you you get little dips 
No, nope, oh. no matter what. And you fill them in and then, you know, oh, look how nice it is. And people will get the roller or whatever it is and roll out their yard nice and flat. And then another rain comes and then that that uh, the soil just it starts again in a different place. It'll, yeah. You know, for, <laughs> for so us, I, that I, means the paving stones are moving. Yeah. Okay. Unless you put it like a full on. Concrete. And even then you know, cracks a lot in our area. So you walk along in our area and you see all these cracks in the sidewalks and some of them are new yeah. sidewalks, but it's the soil underneath it. Mm-hmm. It's mobile. So I'm, I'm, I'm finding myself a little bit confused because we went from tractors to, to concrete, to concrete, concrete and paving. So a chicken tractor is a place where a mobile chicken fertilizing unit. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like. Yes. You know, cause you bring the chickens up and if you want to fertilize an area, you bring them there and you let them do their stuff for mm-hmm. the day. Yep. And then you can bring them to another space and do that. Yep. I know that one of our gardening, our farming friends had said that one of his ideas was to make a tractor that would go on top of raised beds and that you would wheel it to a spot, let them do their stuff. And the next day you'd go to another spot, mm-hmm. you know, and kind of you know, fertilize that bed really well, you know, and, you know, and then, you know, of course you can move to other places. But I was thinking when we were talking earlier about having the chickens in the front, it wasn't necessarily for that particular uh, reason to fertilize it more along the lines of, you know, helping us with pest control. Yeah, so that's actually, why I was. They would mm-hmm. actually move. But you could use a tractor for transport too. Oh, well. yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. I mean, you've got a pretty big area out here that has some plants that uh, they would probably enjoy ripping up pretty nicely. Oh, yeah, they have those cleavers. Yeah, oh, they'll, they'll eat the cleavers. What about bindweed? Do you think the bindweed? Bind I don't know. I've, oh, I've never I'd had them. i see if they try that. <laughs> try it. That'd yeah. be awesome. That that nothing be so else. They're awesome. scratching it all up. Yeah. 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 You know? So that's yeah. that's the one. Yeah. And, I'm, and okay, so that's what I was just trying to, to, to clarify because we really didn't, I didn't hear a, a real definition of what it was, but it's a portable. It's a portable. It's a big yeah. rectangular yeah. wire. Coop. Coop. And yeah, it's a mobile coop. Yeah, yeah. it's a mobile coop. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that, that you know. Or a mobile. Had, it's really a mobile run, actually, more than a mobile yes, coop. Yeah. Because a coop is solid and it's a place to roost at night and mm-hmm. put the nest And you don't want them to stay there at night. I've, oh, I've yeah. had to do that when I've had a sick chicken. I put them in there. Sure. So they were separate from the rest of the flock. And you got to yeah. make sure they have water, yeah. of course. And don't, don't give chickens... Uh, wa- they can drink from bowls, but don't pretend that their main source of water will be from a bowl, right? Because they will tip it over, and they are very prone to uh, dehydration. Okay, so that's why people have the little water. We have one that is like a. It looks like a plastic bucket with that hangs upside down, mm-hmm. or it hangs. It's got like little nipples in the bottom, right? Yep, stuck into the people bottom like that. That's a lot cleaner than yeah. I have Assuming just a little basin leak. And it's empty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It started dripping. I don't know if it stopped dripping. Yeah. No, it's, it's good to keep an eye on those in the inclement weather, too, because yeah. they can, the nipples can freeze. They can freeze. Yeah. yeah. Did, that whole, in our weather, that whole container froze. It was, right. it was frozen when we, when we started bringing it here. But by the time we got it here, the block <laughs> of ice had fallen out of it, which was perfectly yeah. fine. Did they put and molasses it. in it? In what? I Their have no idea. Container. They probably didn't know to. Oh, and, if they, if they, and if they did, they didn't say to. Because I suppose if you increase yeah. the sugar content, then it's, it's not going to freeze. freeze. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. How much molasses should I put in if it's like per gallon? Uh, I remember bringing out buckets, uh, five gallon buckets, and we would put like a. It seemed like we put about half a cup to a fourth of a cup of molasses in a five gallon bucket, which okay. would be about four gallons full. So it wouldn't take much, like a, a tablespoon. Yeah. And okay. warming it in hot water first makes sense. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. you just go down a nice little glop. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah that putting makes sense. that in there. Sometimes in the water in the summer, I'll put uh, apple cider vinegar, uh, like a teaspoon or two of that in there because of the electrolytes. To yeah, make sure yeah. That they're also, not. in fact, that's also really good for the. Um, uh, we talked about this a long time ago, which was the um, the um, the positive and negative digestional. Um, parasites. The Are you talking about yeast? No, the um, oh for the ch- the parrot you got. Well, yeah, but oh, it, yeah. It, it works for birds as well. I'm trying to remember the test that that guy did. Mm. Oh, the gram. Yeah, gram, gram stains. stains. It helps. It oh, helps, bacteria. Right. It yeah. helps to balance that uh, apple uh, raw or you know, there's organic. There's two types. Yeah, there's uh-huh. one with the mother on it. Right. That vinegar is really good yeah. for helping that. So you, right, yeah, because there's so, gram positive or gram negative bacteria, right, which just yeah. depends on how they. Right, and you want that more balanced. Look. 
Yeah. Not because if one gets out of whack, the other it can change the, the whole chemistry. intestinal flora. Yeah. Right. So okay. that's a really good solution. And I don't know if you realize it when you're doing it that that's what it's actually doing as well. Yeah, and I'll I'll mm-hmm. change. Sometimes I'm just putting apple cider vinegar, and sometimes it's infused apple cider vinegar. Like if I'm with a different kind of herb. Mm. Uh, so like, like we you've make infused it with lavender or whatever makes sense. Some, yeah, uh, cleavers. Makes I've given sense. them yeah, that because that that's lung. very high nutrient. Yeah, um, I've done it with uh, the. I've done it with comfrey, but it got a little clumpy. Oh yeah, kind of got mucilaginous. Gooey. Yeah, probably. Yeah, they didn't care, but I was like, oh, I don't uh, want to clean that basin. Yeah, that doesn't sound fun. No, <laughs> not at all. No, yeah. I and, imagine calendula would be a really good one. Yeah, calendula I've done, and we have on our site uh, anti-inflammatory blend that I put that in their water too. You know, when they've hurt themselves because they've done something stupid or we've done something stupid. I mean, the critters get hurt. And you're not going to sit there and, and put a poultice on a chicken. No. That's not likely to work, I'm thinking, based on my experience in moving them chickens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> They're not going to be want to be still for It won't be long. settling to them. Although no. I have, when I had a, a chicken that had an egg bound, mm. um, I have gone into a dark room with a chicken in the towel. Mm-hmm. You know, go ahead, laugh now. And then I had a, a hot rag, well, warm rag that I put some lavender essential oil and I put that on the little chicken's butt <laughs> and just sat there and and held the chicken for like an hour mm-hmm. on, on like a baby. Like a baby. And then did it the, work? It did work. Oh, good. Yeah, so it good. released the bound egg. So how often are you assuming that you're doing everything, keeping up with your chores and you know, doing a good job of feeding and Mm -hmm. and presume using nice, good variety of diet and organic foods and all of that. How often is it likely for chickens to get sick? Well, it's going to depend on your area. For instance, in this area, fungal issues are a big deal. We have a really damp climate here. Correct. But if you're living down in Texas, then you can get leg mites and different things like that. It just depends on the area. And that's when it's good to Uh, part of your homework is talking with people that have chickens in the area. What have you run into? You know, do you, do and when you talk to them, take a look at how clean they're keeping their coop. Like I actually don't dig out the poop except every couple of months. Oh really? Yeah. You leave a lot in there. I do. But the poop in the winter, I just keep shoveling more bedding on it. Right. And it keeps them warm. Um, But in the summer, of course, the odor of it is, isn't my favorite, nor is it mm-hmm. there. So I'll, mm-hmm. you know, scoop that out and throw that onto um, either my compost or use it as top dressing for some plants. Okay. You know, and I know a lot of people are worried, oh, that's a lot of nitrogen, cause nitrogen burns. Like, yeah, but that's not fresh poop. That's right. dried. Yeah, yeah. So it does have some nitrogen, but it's not, uh, nitrogen goes into the air so quickly. Well, and our soil tends to be quite depleted because we have so much rain yeah. that it, you know, it's it's we get clay. It yes, turns into exactly. clay quickly. So exactly. for us, our soil needs nitrogen. Yeah. I imagine down in Texas, they're less in need of nitrogen. Right. And it's hot, too. <laughs> yeah. And chickens are very prone, like I said before, to temperature. So that's a it's a pretty important thing to make sure that your chickens have shade. So with my mm, chicken tractor, sense. back to that one again, I put up a little mini roof on it. Nice. So you could put like a tarp roof or something. Right. Just so to, they don't just sit in there and cook. Right. Makes That's, sense. And there's a lot of different um, plans for chicken tractors on the internet. Yeah, it's which, a simple search. Mm-hmm. Now a word from our sponsor. Occupy Medical is a free street reach integrated health clinic that demonstrates by example that healthcare really is a human right. We're an all-volunteer clinic of doctors, nurses, herbalists, and others working together to heal the community. What kind of donations are you guys looking for? We need vitamins, herbs, socks, toothbrushes, and, of course, good old-fashioned money. You can find a complete list of our needs and contact information at Occupy-Medical.org. Occupy Medical is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Okay, back to our show. We were talking chicken tractors, guys. Chicken tractors. Chicken tractors, yes, yes, and keeping them in the shade. What are some of the the factors that you should really be thinking about if you're thinking for the first time of of getting into chickens? I mean, obviously the cost. The cost, That was one thing that was going to be prohibitive for my family, and then we were lucky enough to adopt them. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Um, and I know you could look through like Craigslist and, you know, just keep your ear open to your permacultural community. So potentially you can find ways to reduce costs. What are some other factors that you should be aware of? Um, well, if you are picking up a used chicken tractor uh, or a used coop or whatever, make sure that you if you in your case, you you know, the people are very clean. Right. And you it's, know, it is the chickens. Time. Yeah. And it was their home. So. Right. I'm not right. transporting something new, exposing them to something new as much as just my yard is new. Mm-hmm. But but for other people, if you were, you know, piecemealing it, right. buying a used coop here and yeah, a tractor Yeah, like I wasn't there. all about uh, the treated wood because okay. I felt like the yeah. outgassing was was dangerous. Sure. You know, and, and some people aren't, they're just like, oh, this is a nice way to make money. So they're not necessarily thinking right. about all those little details. And for some people, it doesn't matter to them. But to me, it mattered. So we made our own, my husband and I, and I think it ended up taking us uh, because we were using scrap wood from some of his old projects and he would just set that stuff aside. It's either going to the dump or we're using it. And we assembled it in the the chicken tractor. Took us uh, not too long, a couple of hours. That's not too bad. Yeah. If you factor in the the time that is spent to realize, oh, wait, we didn't have the right sizing wheels, so I'd return them. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's the real time. A real time. Two days. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, you can find lots of plans for those. You probably already had an idea what you were going to do. And right. Your husband's yeah. pretty handy, so I'm sure he had an idea what you guys were going to do. But yeah. for someone that has no idea, there are a lot of plans online that are free mm-hmm. that you can find. Mm-hmm. Everything from you know the simple ones to the more complicated ones. Yeah. Ours was pretty heavy. That was yeah. one of the issues. One of the challenges, yeah. yeah. But, it, you know, if you're just a retired couple and you don't want to lug things around, you know, just provide a big enough yard for your yeah. chickens to run around in. And that will, that does a lot for disease prevention. Yeah. What I read was it's somewhere in the neighborhood of four to 10 square feet per chicken mm-hmm. for a coop and run included. Okay. So if you're not going to have a full, like let them have your entire yard, but you're going to give them a portion of the yard mm-hmm. that you fence off. Right. That's, you know, then it depends on how many chickens you want to have. Yeah. So in our case, we have four chickens and we... Didn't do precise measurements, but it looks like the run and the coop together comes out to between 40 and 50 square feet of floor space. And then they have the roosting bars. And in the run, they've got a spot where they can fly up a little bit. Yeah, and that's, a, that's nice, too. The, the thing that I think people that I've known that have taken on chickens didn't take into account is they would see it on like Martha Stewart or something like that. And they Mm -hmm. had this beautiful glossy idea of what it was going to look like. Everything was going to be pastoral and well, my ancestors did this and whatever. And yeah, yeah, your ancestors did that in the world that they lived in. Right. Right. And their coops didn't look like Martha Stewart's coops. No. I mean, unless your ancestor is Martha Stewart. We have a really pretty coop, but I imagine that the area, like the ground under the run and the ground under the coop, because ours is high enough up. So they have space under the coop that's Mm -hmm. fenced in and safe for them to scratch in the dark Mm -hmm. or well, not in the dark, it's fed, but it's shaded in the shade. In the shade. shade. Yes. (laughs) Anyway, they'll that's going to become a big muddy mess oh yes everywhere yeah. you know everywhere they are if i let them in my yard they're probably going to be having spots that become pretty scratched up I right assume. yeah and they will they bathe themselves with dirt yeah right i found that interesting yes yeah. that's how they get because they're dusting their feathers right. so yeah. i'm like looking at this this reading i'm like I have to get a box of dust. What does that really mean? <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> wait, what? They right. say you have to get a box well, of dust? Well, you know, you would get a box and you would put this dust in there. So what are we supposed to like then, dust off our shelves? <laughs> you know, you know with uh, a feather wow. duster? Me, to, yeah, a dust bath to clean themselves from mites and bacteria. Yes. Chickens don't bathe in water. They do it in dust. Mm-hmm. Make sure to provide a dust bath. Okay. An open box, two foot by two foot by 16 filled with dust. Now, do you go and buy a bag of dust? What, what's what's dust, Sue? What do you wow. do, Sue? Okay, okay. Here's, let's be practical here. Are, <laughs> oh, we, buying, oh, are we buying dust or you are we could, just... You could do that. I'm what, sure that the, there's... Or are we just giving them ground bags. so that they can scratch? I just, and, if I had mine confined more, I would have like a little sandbox. That's mm-hmm. what I would do. But what I have is a place under where the wheelbarrows are stored that has dirt. And they dig that up. I didn't dig that. They dug okay. it. They, they dug chose it for it. you. So and they net. will choose a different place depending on the year. Uh-huh. And I imagine because the old dust bath has bugs in it now. 
Ah, yeah. so they'll just, just choose like cats to move. do. So yeah. you should probably avoid that with the dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep yeah. him away from, from the, the dust the, bath. Yeah. yeah. So really, what you're saying is that naturally they'll find a spot where they'll mm-hmm. pick that they and they'll pick. dig it. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. what in our yard would be a conducive to that? What you know, because you've seen our yard, mm-hmm. and so you know. what do we? We have do a, we have a natural area. Do you think that they for would for up? listeners we have in this area we're talking about we have some laurels, the hedge style ones that nothing grows underneath them because they like like walnut trees. They're allelopathic. Yeah, they're allelopathic. Mm-hmm. So that area is mostly you know dirt and right. laurel leaves, and then we have some grass that is somewhat patchy. In part because of the weather and what you were talking about with the soil yeah, going shifts. up and down, shifting. Mm-hmm. And, and then we have the patio, which is all cement, and the walkway, which is all cement. And then we have a covered spot that's got a few bricks for part of it. And then the other part is just all like the bikes and stuff going there. They're undercover, but it's open, like mm-hmm. a lean-to. Right. And then we have a, a um, shed. Well, wherever you put your chickens... And since yours are not free range right now, wherever they are walking on, that will turn to dirt. Yes. So if you have just a larger spot, I mean, they're I figure the size of your chicken um, to to wherever they can stretch their wings. That's okay. about all they need. So and it's, it's a, usually they dig themselves a little pit. And they usually do just one wing at a time? Yeah. Or do you need double Oh my gosh, span? it's super adorable. Because <laughs> they pull their wings out and then their legs are out. As well as if they are ballet dancers, uh, Looks super adorable, cute. and they will sun themselves that way too. They'll just nice. put lay on their side and then put their wi- spread out their wings. Nice, and they're sunning the, the the feathers and have their leg out, and it's like, what are you? You're not in my ballet. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that just looks dumb. So, so, so just, about that much room, right? But, so, but depending the, on your the, chicken, the constituents of the dirt. Could Should be, any be kind of dirt. Well, don't okay. they won't? Soil, uh, yeah, if it's mud, they won't do it. They won't do okay. it. So, so it, it needs to be sand. dry. It needs to be dry. Yeah. So, so that's why maybe like in our area, right? Right now, mm-hmm. what do you do for them? Because it's wet everywhere. Right. Yeah, right wet. now, my well, for the last week, they've stayed in the coop because it's snow. Yeah. They will not leave, <laughs> and they are tonight. and they are angry at me because they are sure I think that I am the god of weather, <laughs> and fault. I screwed with the temperature. It's so definitely your fault. It, it's obviously my fault. So yeah. I'd open it up and say, "Hey, girls, do you want to go out here?" I saw and them. They don't have Facebook. a middle finger to give me, but <laughs> they laughed at you. I heard it. That would be That's funny the if, dumbest if, if idea. The chicken foot comes out in the middle, talent. <laughs> yeah, like, look, look at this. Can you read between the lines? Yeah. <laughs> fix it. Go fix, fix it. it. Go so, fix it. so it wouldn't be the regular dirt, and it wouldn't be muddy. But you said that you had an area that sheltered from the rain with wheelbarrows. Yeah, it's just under the eaves, and there's and a wheelbarrow leaning go. against the wall, or they go underneath where the the kids slide is. Okay. Well, I you think know, in the it's summer, sheltered. It wouldn't be bad here because we'll have a lot of that. But yeah. I'm more mm-hmm. concerned about the winter where I might have to go buy dust. <laughs> don't, buy, don't, don't buy dust. Don't buy dust. I mean, if you want something, you can throw some sand in there. Right. You know, the place where they are now to see where they go. To throw some sand in the place where it's, you know, they're the two where they're spending most of their daytime. Sure. What's the 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 tall roost that you got for them? We call that the run. The run. The one that's open air is the yeah. run and the yeah. other side is the coop. If you throw some some sand in there, I mean they'll they'll pick a place. So pick sand, a so dust can be really equate with it sand. Can, yeah, yeah, sand. Yeah, it's sand. Yeah, yeah. loose dry dirt. dirt. Loose yeah, dry dirt. loose dry dirt. Okay. Something to get between their feathers to get those that, little itchies that, out. If that's, mm-hmm. I'm researching this, and that'd be a term that I'd never really heard. I understand the concept of cleaning. Yeah. I know what they're doing, mm-hmm. but to say I need to buy dust, I would hate to go to the farm store and say, mm-hmm. "Hey, I need a bag of dust," and watch <laughs> those people's faces look at me like they're retarded. <laughs> Yeah, or they'd be they'd crack their knuckles and say, "There's a whole bunch of other things I'd like to sell you now." Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah. Have you had the chicken comb yet? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's not really the one on their head; it's one you have to purchase over here in right. the special aisle. Yeah, <laughs> and it only comes twenty nine ninety nine. Yes. yes, right. Is your chicken right handed or left handed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stuff out there that they sell people, and I know some of it is. Mm, probably helpful for particular situations, but for the right. most part, they're, they're hardy critters. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's some fluffy, guffy little chickens that need a lot of of help. Uh, right. Silkies tend to be a little less hardy. And I, ha- I have a neighbor that had a silky and 
Oh my gosh. That didn't go well. It what I couldn't figure it out. I mean, she was picking her chickens on what looked good and I'm not uh-huh. aesthetic. So yeah. that wasn't, you know, I'm already really? like, I'm really? already scratching my head. And I don't understand. Uh, and then she ran into some personality problems, conflicts between her chickens. Oh. The silky was in charge of everybody. Oops. All the time. Uh huh. Really bossy. And, and one of the chickens, well. the poor little Orpington was just, had a terrible life. Right. Until we oh. adopted her. Good. Yeah. Good. And now she's got a really good life. Yeah. And the silky got sick all the time. Just all the yeah, time. Yeah. I don't need that. Yeah. God knows I don't need that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't either. So, but, so mean, there's daily routine. That's another thing right. you need to factor in if mm. you're thinking about chickens. Yeah. Uh, for my chickens, I let them out of the coop, mm-hmm. you know, in the morning. When? Sunrise? When the rooster if, calls? Uh, when the rooster calls. <laughs> Do you think she was up that early? <laughs> in the asking. winter, sure, sunrise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, they'll, they, I, I'm okay with them having emotions that are negative towards me. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, they can they be can irritated wait. with you. I mean, they've got food, they've got water, right. you know, they have a brick to sit on. They can chat amongst <laughs> they themselves. Have a brick to sit <laughs> they on. do. They have their own brick. Did you give them some knitting needles and some yarn? I, I did not. I should do that. Give them I just want to be a pie. <laughs> In the summer, I'll like open up the back so they can see out. But no, they, I just get up at pretty much the same time. So you, whatever, seven-ish or whatever, whatever. Whenever makes sense for you in yeah. the morning, whatever your morning routine is, assuming yeah. you're not a teenager who sleeps till noon. Right. Right. Because right. I assume you probably don't want to really leave them in the coop till noon. No, most of the I don't time. want to get overheated. I don't want to get bored and sassy. That's, that's yeah. me. I'm the one that gets sassy. Yeah. So I'll, I'll open them up and check for eggs, and they go running out. They're all excited about that. And check their feed and check their water. And usually I have to tip out the the gunk and the poo and all the the stuff that they've got knocked into their water and i know it's mm-hmm. supposed to be easier if you've got the hanging water or yeah no whether it's got the little nipples on it or not but mine's just sitting up on a piece of wood okay. so yeah. and it doesn't bother me to to tip it yeah. and they'll check their little oyster shell dish and make sure that there's oyster shells in them what do you need the oyster shells for uh calcium we because we live up here so it's low calcium low magnesium and the oyster shells, uh, there are other things that people do, like they'll take eggshells and crush them mm-hmm. and bake them and give that to them. But I don't have that kind of time on my hands. So I just use the oyster shells to make sure that they have nice thick, nice thick shells and they like it. And I also will use the oyster shells um, when I put a new garden bed down. I'll throw that into the oh, garden yeah. bed and then let the girls go scratch around in it and they dig it in. Nice. So they're... You know they're they're getting the bugs out as as well as digging that rich calcium into the soil, which is another benefit. Yes. Check out the gardening with chickens article. Yep, yep. on the practical herbalist. Yeah, that's right. And some of the things that you grow, they will eat in a heartbeat, and some of the things that they'll just kind of leave alone. So I have had them eat some of the rose leaves, but not a lot. They just kind of nibble once in a while. Okay. That's never so been roses a problem. are fairly safe. Yep, uh, mint. They don't. They don't touch nice. the mint. And there's another list in there as well about the plants that chickens like and plants that chickens okay. don't. Lemon balm. You can grow as much lemon balm as you like, and and we'll they will. Right they won't judge you, you know. But they won't eat it either. They'll, so. they'll turn their little beaks <laughs> up. Yes, yeah, like hmm. Yeah, it's boring to the plant. Comfrey. They adore. They nice. love to eat that. Anything that you would put like. Carrot seeds, or that would be delicious. Uh, beet like. leaves, they would love that. Okay, so, so potatoes, they don't like. So you can grow potatoes in the chicken run area. Well, yeah, they the they're going to dig them out though. But, like uh, I have the so. potato towers, and I'll open the potato tower, and they go in there and they eat what's in the potato tower, and they kick out my potatoes into one little spot. That's right. You oh, put your that's chickens helpful. To work. I put yeah. them to work all the time. Yeah. So yeah, I have. I open the potato tower, and then they kick. To kick out a little bundle of potatoes and the potato tower just gets emptier and emptier and emptier and I'm and that's not, what you want at and that that's point. what i want and they yeah. don't like those potatoes they think they're awful that's good yes that's helpful and they don't eat my tomatoes either and they eat slugs so they eat slugs. Like nightshades are do really they eat snails mm-hmm. well, yeah they eat snails. and you know for mine they were so spoiled for a while so i had to step on the snails first before they would eat them you would, you would pre-crack their shell yes <laughs> you to pre-crack them ducks will just like gobble, gobble those snails right up they they had no problem with that yeah oh my they gosh over that 
I, I picked a big, when my kids were little, we picked a big uh, bucket of snails, like a little one gallon pail of snails. Uh-huh. And then I took my kids to the stream, which is nearby our house. Uh, and they were so excited, like, oh, we're going to feed the ducks. And like, yep, we're going to feed them these snails. And then we stood on the bridge and I threw a handful of snails into the water and they went, boo, 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 boo. And the ducks went and got them. My kids, their faces were of horror. Like, oh. I I don't know what they thought was going to happen. I thought I described it very well. (laughs) Did you not realize that the snails are the food? (laughs) I don't know. We're going to feed. I don't know how that played out in their heads. But oh well. That's Uh, I'm just guaranteeing a job for therapists. That's That's important. It's a very important industry to support. I'm a job maker. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, they'll eat it. But some chickens, they are fussy. And then you get a new chicken in, they'll eat anything. And then all of a sudden, they're not fussy about that. My chickens oh, wouldn't eat bread. Nice. They were gluten free. Gluten free birds. <laughs> yeah. Hey. And then we got this other chicken in and who ate the bread and they would like swivel their little heads and look like, one, oh. one side to the other. What are you eating? Is what? that delicious? What? I didn't she's, know that was she's delicious. Not tra- she's not trying to kill you. Yeah. So oh, she would, look, they would go over. Look, she's not dead yet. She's not dead. Yeah. They went over and they yet. ate the bread nice. so now they'll eat bread sounds nice. like more of a competition thing than a hey you're getting more food than us that's right <laughs> yeah, yeah that's right yeah they wouldn't eat corn either until that chicken came and taught them to eat corn so they can pretty much eat just about every like all your vegetable ends when you're making a salad mm-hmm. or cooking as except long as the they're potatoes. not yeah except the potatoes and can tomatoes. they tomatoes is it any of the nightshade family or just the potatoes i haven't noticed them eating the tomatoes either okay yeah. which was great last night we made a salad and i it was the point of the, in which the greens you start to get those pieces that start to Little wilty, little wilty, well, and, and even yeah. a little beyond, slimy, yeah. yeah, right. So there was a, probably a quarter of the salad that I didn't want to put, you know, serve to us, but that was perfect for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I was like, oh, this is really nice because, yeah. Yeah. you know, I don't have to worry about constantly, you know, composting everything and how I'm going to work that through. And yeah. you know, what about your worm bin? Is that going to be competition? Pico and the worms right now cannot keep up with because we eat a lot of vegetables. Oh, right. So Good. and we have a teenager. So, right. you know, that's like two adults right there. Mm-hmm. So it's like a four adult house eating right. lots of vegetables. Yeah. So, so you got a lot. So there's no competition. Yeah. yeah there's good. Well, and it's good. winter right now. So the worms are really much more they're not Dormant. as, as uh, prolific as they are in the summer. Oh, right? OK. Um, and the but, worms eat things that I wouldn't give to the chickens, like the spent um, coffee, coffee grounds. Oh, right. Leaves. Yeah. They're not going to eat that. Right. Yeah. So we give them they'll be getting all of that stuff for sure. You know, like herbal. Yeah. Infusion it's just funny now how you leavings. before <laughs> we had you know, how you start your recycling. Yeah, we now we have to our, restore our, our compost. compost. <laughs> okay, this is going into the main bin. This is going to the chickens. This is going to the worms. This is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's like this. And whole, here's Kiko's pile. You know, there's this whole thing now of, of uh, how we, we do it. But I will say, like in our area, uh, you know, we go to the um, we go directly to the to the refuse place. Mm-hmm. We don't have trash service at our curb. Mm-hmm. We've chosen that because of cost. Our neighbors do. Yeah, our neighbors right. do. We choose to we not. We choose to. not, to, right. not to because we're going to recycle more. But what they've done is they used to be an honor system. You'd go up and you'd tell them, I have four bins. It totals this many cubic feet. Mm-hmm. Now it's my weight. Oh. So when you roll up with your trailer, so it doesn't – so if you have – even if you have less cubic feet but your weight is more – Mm-hmm. You're, you're going to pay, pay more. Uh-huh. Yeah. So food is majority water. Oh, yes. yes. Water weighs a lot. Yes, it does. Yeah. That You're going to pay a lot of money to uh, – to, to, to dispose trash. of organic material in this in this way. Mm-hmm. You're going to pay a lot more money than you need to. Right. Yep. And when we had stopped composting, we had stopped doing all this stuff, and we mm-hmm. had a few trash runs beforehand. That was I mean, I was lifting out those trash bins, and they were so heavy. So I'm very happy to have – a flock of chickens and worms and eating and having this farm that we're doing to take majority of our organic waste off of our hands and stuff. I don't have to pay to to, yeah. make it, to, to take away. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's one thing to factor in. I mean, a lot of people say, oh, I'm just getting for the eggs, which you're the way most people do chickens is they've got chickens will, especially if they're putting lights on them so that they lay during the winter, right. which oh, yeah. I don't do. My chickens continued that sounds like a lot of work to me (laughs) i couldn't do that but but some people could whatever you know know, i don't need to have eggs all year round but if i really need some eggs in the winter i can go buy them from the store too but Mm -hmm. you extend the lifespan of your chicken and their egg laying if you don't put lights on them in the winter right so mine my chicken emily for example died of old age at eight 
and she laid eggs until a couple of weeks before she passed. Wow. It wasn't as often. It wasn't every day or every 25 hours, I guess, is when they generate their eggs. But yeah, that's a... that was that's something to take in consideration. And most mm-hmm. people they're trying to get all the eggs they can out of the chickens, and so they they'll lay eggs for like three or four years. But you know, if you do yeah. a little less pressure on them, then, then they'll they're, last longer. They're healthier, and they they'll last longer. Yeah. And then what about broody chickens? I've heard of this. Yeah. And I've yeah. heard this can be a horrible problem. Is it really as horrible a problem as I have heard? If you care. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, mean, then, like, I frankly have spent long periods of my life really angry. And it just didn't, it just didn't, it didn't I'm not going to judge a chicken for having that same issue. Like so is I know what, hormones. Is that what happens when they're broody that they get, they start to get angry? Is they that why angry. it's They don't want to be screwed with. They're okay. just like, they, their body has said, okay, now I have made some eggs and at some point they've been fertilized, which of course in our area they haven't. Right. And so now I'm going to hatch them and you just gotta stay away from my boobies. Okay. So that's what they're doing. Okay. And I get that, you know. I so have kids. I've, I've I seen, it. I've seen the little fake eggs yeah, that you can buy uh-huh. at the farm well, supply yeah, store. Time, every time we suggest something yeah. that they should buy, you so should see is Sue's it eyes smart? roll. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I mean, my understanding is you're supposed to use those when you have a broody hen, and you just switch to switch out the egg that she has for that one. Although mm-hmm. I'm, I'm assuming you're hoping not to get you know pecked all to hell in the process of doing this. Oh, but if you switch them out, then she's not sitting on an egg that's going to turn like rancid as she sits on it right well you know yeah I when mean, she's broody no one else gets into that box that's what i was thinking no usually they all share the same box i've seen where people have like i have five chickens so i have five roosting nesting boxes right. <laughs> <laughs> you must love making nesting boxes because they all want that one just we the, have yeah. two one is for when they get broody and then that's the broody one and they right. choose you don't choose no. stop thinking you can choose they oh, choose they and choose. then the other one when they start getting fussy like that <laughs> then you have two and the other other ones will stay well away from the broody chicken. Okay. Although we had a weird relationship with uh, two chickens that were sisters. And when one went broody and the other one wanted to lay, the other one would get on top of the chicken, lay Ooh. in the corner, and then get up and leave. And they were okay. But I don't expect so that to ever be duplicated. So chicken was slowly collecting eggs. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like, oh, we'll take that away. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, sis. Yeah. Bump, fist bump. Whatever they do. I don't know. But yeah, I don't. And I, I think that's an unusual situation. But you know the the eggs or golf balls. Uh-huh. You don't have to buy a fake egg. You can, I mean, they're cute though. Ball. If you like cute things, you should put yeah. them in there. Uh, but just a golf ball. Yeah. yeah. yeah like Whereas you can go to the golf range and snitch all the ones you want because people yeah. don't know where they are anyway. You put the yeah. golf ball. <laughs> There's in, Sue out there hunting for golf balls. <laughs> I got it. Woman pulling up and running away real fast. Now y'all know why it is they have guard dogs at the golf range in oh, Eugene. Oh, yeah. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean. Sue going out in the night. Ding, stealing ding, the golf ding, balls. Ding, ding. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you just so put those in the nesting they, box. They have no idea that it's a, a, they don't a, care. They don't know. a Titleist and versus a <laughs> What you're really <laughs> using those for, though, is to keep them from pecking their own eggs. Okay. Because yeah. they peck a golf ball or a fake egg and they will be nothing but disappointed because it's hard. Right. So that's Why would they breaking peck their eggs? them. Because that they're, usually that's a sign that they're um, low in calcium. Okay. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So if you notice your chickens pecking their own eggs, then you should up their calcium right. with nutrients oyster with oyster right. shells. And, and chickens will comfrey. eat anything. You know, yeah. the thing to keep in mind is that chickens, chickens taste like chicken, even to chickens. Yeah. <laughs> so if a chicken gets a wound, you got to separate it because they will see that blood and they're like, oh, that does look delicious. Right. And they will peck at that poor little chicken and make Until the wound bigger. Blood. Right. So, and predators, of course, see it that way too. If you have a wounded chicken, then you have to extra protect it. Right. Or that smell of blood is going to bring a bunch more predators. Right. You were talking about diet and eating there for a second, and it made me think of the other question is that chickens don't have teeth. No, they don't. So they need grit. They need grit, yeah, which is part of the oyster shell thing as well. So Mm -hmm. do you, does a, a yard typically have enough grit or do you need to adjunct it, you think? Um, I think it depends on the yard. There are p- people I know that live in Arizona that keep chickens and their biggest complaint is not getting enough grit. I mean, they've have bowls of grit and the, the chickens ignore them. I used to buy grit and I don't anymore because they would just ignore it. I just have the oyster shell. Right. If but with my ducks, with chickens ducks, free roam. You put the grit into the feed. 
Yeah. You just add it in. My chickens would not. That they didn't even, work. No, okay. they thought I was stupid. But if they're no. if they're foraging in in your 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 um, piles for potatoes and your, I mean, they're you, getting you, plenty. Yeah, no matter they're what soil can. you have, it's going to have. Because really, it's soil yeah. is what they need. Yep. That's and if you live in really a sandy gets. area like Arizona, for example, you don't need to add that. That's there. It's already there. Part but of if the it's hyper confined, for instance, if these are caged chickens, they're just going to stay in a cage. Yeah. And you need to supplement yeah. a lot. Right. And that's when people are talking about antibiotics and right. different things like that. My chickens don't need antibiotics. What would be a sign that they're not getting enough good for digestion, you think? Uh, it, if they're – sometimes chickens will co- start coughing up something. Okay. Or they Beautiful they start losing – Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. That's for you, listeners. Uh, or they, it's my new ringtone. They're, they're, uh, yeah. <laughs> Or their feathers will start looking bad okay. or they'll just okay. – they're not digesting. They're not getting the nutrients they're, that they okay. need. So they, if you're seeing an unhealthy chicken, that could be a simple way to – Try yeah, adding just try, grits, see Try it nutritionally first just yeah. like we do with our kids. Right. Yeah. We'll yeah. Just try eating actual food instead of nachos all day. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. But there's a whole bunch of things that, that uh, you get used to different breeds. Some breeds right. are good at hunting and foraging and some breeds aren't and there's lots of lists on the internet that you can find that all over the place i saw this wonderful video not that long ago i think it was on facebook of a chicken and a cat and a Mm -hmm. mouse and the mouse the cat's looking at the mouse and and the mouse is going along and then the cat's like "Ooh, you know maybe i should do this but keeping like like hunting the like a two foot yeah two foot space between her and the and the mouse and kind of going Mm -hmm. in then stepping back and the chicken's watching this happen and then finally she this is shakes her head Head, I mean, literally shakes her head like twice, like, oh, my God, goes over, snatches up the mouse, eats it right up. <laughs> Bangs its head against the ground yes, a couple exactly. times. Bong, 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 bong. This is how it's done, little cat. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> that was really cute. They will do that. They will do that. I, I, actually, that was surprising to me to, to realize that, that chickens can be good micers. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it depends on the breed. Right. Some of them are... Like I had a, I'm trying to remember what I had that was, Buckeyes are famous for being good hunters. Nice. And I've never myself had a Buckeye, so I just have to, um, some of those older breeds are pretty good at it. Um, You have the Americana and that's a good mouser. Oh, good. They're good foragers too, but it comes with a price. They're good foragers. Which means they're (laughs) also going to make a mess. Right. I'm hoping the frogs in our laurels will be okay because we have tree frogs in our laurels. Yeah. And I'm hoping they're smart enough to just go high enough up because if they go up a couple feet into the laurels, the chickens Mm -hmm. really won't be able to get in there because the laurels are fairly dense. So you don't have French chickens. I eat the frog eggs or the frog legs. Hope not. Yeah. I hope not. Because I loved listening to the frogs in the spring. I know. Spring and we have it for like, it's like two or three months that I get to listen to them right outside my window. Because my window happens to be really close to laurels. Aww. And then we hear the, the frogs start going. And then at midnight, the Lincoln Sparrow will start singing. This is like a Disney movie. Do they come <laughs> in and like clean your kitchen oh, too? Just about, right? <laughs> in the morning, we have doves. Yeah. And they coo. Well, <laughs> actually, they we do. <laughs> actually, we, we do. No, I know. They coo over over there on the line and oh then we have gosh. the sparrow the other sparrow the house sparrow flock that comes and they just like it's just this wonderful jubilant cacophony love mm-hmm. that word right cacophony oh, cacophony it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, just, it's so pretty so i'm hoping that the, yeah. the chickens will not scare everyone away nice the There's Jay's a big old flag of, sp- of starlings that nested in the tree next to my parking area at work and like pooped all over my car. Well, yeah. So that was my Disney thing. Was, yeah. was you, you, I know, I did. I, I like, told oh, you. For me. Perfect, yeah. I told you. I told you a few years ago. Never malign the starling. Never ever malign the starling. I was not the only person that got or pooped the jays on. or the crows. <laughs> a friend never. of mine at work who does not malign starlings got poop in her hair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She must have closet maligner. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Is that the way the natural world works? <laughs> Just be kind to the lions. They won't eat you. <laughs> so for more information on all the, the chicken information we got, make sure to check out our show notes because mm-hmm. we'll yep. have all the references to that. We'll probably also have some links to some items on Amazon that you can buy directly from our site if you're interested in some of the stuff that we talked about. Um, but the other big news that um, we've been mentioning is the club. The club. The society, the Herbal Nerd Society society. is live. And you can, right now, if you signed up, you could listen to every one of our podcasts up to show 55. Oh, that reminds me. 
Our herb of the month for the Herbal Society, for mm-hmm. Herbal Nerd Society, is ginger. For January, it's And ginger. Yeah. I just saw a post from some other farmer. I can't remember the name of the farmer on on Instagram mm-hmm. about how they use ginger for their chickens. Oh, really? So yeah. they apparently feed their chickens chunks of ginger and the chickens love it. Really? Okay. What are they I going that for that? I, I don't know. Hmm. I, I saw it was the briefest of posts. And then when I went to read the article, it didn't mention it was just really a incredibly short monograph of ginger. Interesting. So, but they were saying that that's what they do. So, so, so every Herbal month, Nerd Society we're members. Have, maybe, we're going to have an herb of the month to try to do that mm-hmm. every, every uh, st- uh, um, month. Uh, Sue, you wrote some uh, more advanced herbalism articles that are available to society yes. members only um, on, um, well, one was on ginger. Mm-hmm. And, and I wrote one also on ginger oil, okay. which is the volatile oil in ginger. Right. And then I did a little mention about shogunol and then um, uh, zinzerone, which mm-hmm. are the what it turns into as it gets cooked or processed. So if you're into that kind of you know, nitty gritty, nerdy stuff of, of herbalism and everything that, that – It is that the Herbal a, Nerd Society. It is above and beyond mm-hmm. just simple recipes for making tea or a tincture or whatever. Mm-hmm. Then herbal nurse society is, is your is your is your cup of tea, as it were. Cup mm-hmm. of tea, right? yeah. It's, it's very easy to tea. sign up. There's sign ups on uh, under the menu item herbal uh, the herbal nurse society on the website. There's also um, a spot right at the very tippy top of the menu. This is join the society today. You'll probably see it in a newsletter if you're if you're a member of our newsletter. You'll see a place to to join. So there is, and it only costs five bucks a month. That ain't bad. No, it's not bad. And if you want to sign for a year, you even save more money. That's forty nine ninety nine for the year. So you even save twenty percent off of the whole thing. Nice. So you'll get lots of information. We keep adding stuff. The big thing that we'll probably add in the next quarter, at the beginning of next quarter, is the forum. So all mm-hmm. like minded herbal nerd people can talk herbs in a nerdist mm-hmm. kind of way. Mm-hmm. So it's a safe place for nerds, herbal nerds to gather. And now, if you're not in the society, <laughs> but you still want to be kind of nerdy, um, mm-hmm. we're on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can do the hashtag the practical herbalist. Please share all your stuff. We'd love to see your photos. I think that's growing, Candace. I know that mm-hmm. at first when we first started doing this, you had one, maybe two photos that they were yours. And yeah. now as you've been doing this yeah. more and more, we actually have we're quite a few see- people under that hashtag. You know, it has interacting been fun. With that. It's been mm-hmm. fun to see other people posting under in that gallery. Yeah, don't it's forget, really you know, of course, the Twitter. The, yeah, Twitter. We got um, called Chillers on right. Twitter. Chillers. Yes. yes. Uh-huh. This is a, a young person with a very. Uh, they're much. I mean, the bar is much low cooler here. than us, <laughs> yeah. right? <laughs> and I said, "Yeah, these ladies are cooler, are chillers, chillers." Awesome. And I had to look it up, and it in fact means. Look it up. <laughs> I had to look I had it check up. Out the urban dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, darn you! I don't know. Yeah, I think that's. Yes. But it, it means it means that they're cool and laid back and you know, mm-hmm. mellow. Practical. Yeah, practical with practical. right. So that then, of course, nice. there's the there's the main one, which is our Facebook page, our Facebook mm-hmm. group, um, which is what facebook.com slash the practical post mm-hmm. for that one. And we have what two thousand people that, that a lot, of, yeah, it, oh more, weeks, like, yeah, more, something like that. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, two 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 point five k, I think right. at this point. And the like other that. thing that we really want to start asking people to do is to. Um, Comment on on iTunes if you like what you're hearing. Please let let other people know so that we can grow and only make things happen more for us. And in addition to that, if you're on an article on our our website and a question arises or you have a comment, mm-hmm. by all means, there's a comment box at the bottom. Yeah, fill it out. Yeah. We read them, we see them, and we'll answer them. Yeah, you know, and or you'll get a conversation started about that right there. So, some of them we can answer here on the podcast, and yeah. some of them. Yeah, you know, Facebook ones we'll just answer right on Facebook as yeah. as it were. We're not we're not diagnosing or treating any conditions. We're just talking about herbs. Yeah. Right. You know, we're not doctors, so don't get us in trouble. No. Yeah. You know, I mean <laughs> you know, you ask the question. We can only we can we can only uh, answer it in the best possible way. And sometimes mm-hmm. it's not gonna be an answer you'll want because maybe you're asking for something more than we can give you. Right. But if it's the right kind of question, we'll totally answer it. Yeah. Great. Anything else, guys? Mm. Don't forget the herbal folios. Oh, the yeah. herbal folios. Yeah, I mean one of the ways one of the ways that we we stay doing this is is through uh, book sales, and uh, doing that is on Amazon right now, mm-hmm. and uh, we have what eight or nine folios. I believe it's nine folios plus the pocket herbal and herbalism for the zombie apocalypse. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, right. as we are trying to move those up. Uh, more into um, books and other things um, that by funding that by helping us that that only helps us grow and be able to offer actual hard covers yeah Yeah. putting it in print is expensive so so there you go
statements made about herbs and products on this podcast have not been evaluated by the United States Food and Drug Administration, FDA. They're not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. All information provided on this podcast or any affiliated websites is for informational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for advice from your physician or other healthcare professional. You should not use the information on this podcast and its affiliated websites for a diagnosis or treatment of any health problem. Always consult with healthcare professional before starting any new vitamins, supplements, diet, or exercise program before taking any medication, or if you have or suspect you might have a health problem. Any testimonials, questions, or case studies are based on individual results and do not constitute a guarantee that you will achieve the same results.